It's easy to assume our familiar British animals have always been part of the landscape. But very few of the animals we see around us today are native. After the last ice age, animals that had migrated south began to return north. Only a few made it back before the sea cut Britain off from mainland Europe. All the rest had been brought here by people. Some species were brought on purpose, others stowed away, and some were even sent as exotic gifts. Each of their fascinating stories reveals an entangled history of Britain's people and animals. This is the tale of the brown hare. Swift-footed, enigmatic and free. An icon of British wilderness. But it is not native to Britain. It was introduced over 2,000 years ago. Where it originally came from remains a mystery. To the people of Iron Age Britain, this strange animal seemed otherworldly, even sacred. Julius Caesar wrote that the Britons consider it contrary to divine law to eat the hare. They raised these, however, for their own amusement and pleasure. Excavations of Iron Age sites have recovered many complete brown hare skeletons, not butchered for food, but rather buried with care. The care given to hares, both in death and in life, saw their populations increase through the course of the Iron Age. When the Romans arrived in AD 43, they brought their own ideas about hair keeping. They raised them in ornamental gardens and parks, along with other exotic animals such as rabbits and fallow deer. The fashion for these menageries spread across Roman Britain. But in AD 410, the Roman Empire withdrew from Britain. Gardens and parks fell into disrepair and unprotected their animal inmates became prey to the large predators that still lived in Britain at the time, such as bears, lynxes and wolves. Some brown hares must have survived. Mysteriously, their bones are not present at archaeological sites, nor are they mentioned in historical texts. It's as though people were deliberately avoiding them. Even today, there are many superstitions involving brown hares. They are associated with witches, and some consider it unlucky to cross their path, kill them, or even mention their name. Was this why no one spoke of the hare for almost 600 years? Brown hares re-emerge in the literature, art, and archaeological record of the medieval period, particularly after the Norman conquest of 1066. The Normans brought new attitudes to the natural world, including the belief that wild animals were the property of the king and his lords. They hunted as an expression of power, and the brown hare was a favoured quarry, chased by dogs for sport and eaten during grand feasts and banquets. Overhunting had a devastating impact on brown hare populations. Their numbers decreased further as modern farming took more and more land into production, marginalising hare habitats. But the tale of the brown hare is one of resilience. Today, thanks to conservation efforts, their numbers are rebounding, and it seems fitting that we are preserving a species that so clearly symbolizes our history as an ever-changing, adaptable island enriched by the arrival of newcomers. <laughs>